Hey, smart people, Joe here with my friend, Dr. Kate Bieberdorf. Hi, we're at the University of Texas and we're about to do some explosions. Okay, here's the thing with chemistry demos. You never get to get up close and personal because of like safety reasons and stuff. But you're about to see some awesome explosive chem demos like you've never seen them before because we've got BR 180. All right, she's goggled up. We're gonna do some awesome chemistry. I'm gonna get out of the way so I don't get caught on fire. Get out of here. All right, I'm gonna go hit the lights. Hit the lights, okay, good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come over here. I'm gonna coat my entire arm with water. Water has a very high specific heat capacity, so it basically acts like a protective layer for my arm. Now I'm gonna come over here and scoop as many bubbles as I possibly can into my hand. Now these bubbles are filled with methane gas, and now I'm gonna try to light my hand on fire. So my favorite part is I'm gonna turn my arm into your arm. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Okay, that was awesome. I'm glad that wasn't my hand. <laughs> Maybe you can explain what just happened. Okay, so that was a standard combustion reaction using methane gas as a source of fuel. So for a combustion reaction, you need some source of fuel, so that can be coal, it can be oil, it can be natural gas, which methane is the primary ingredient in. So you take a source of fuel, treat it with oxygen, and then you form carbon dioxide and water. Obviously, we release heat. It's very exothermic. Very exothermic. <laughs> Extremely exothermic, and it's so much fun because I actually get to see the fire bounce on my hand. That was really cool. Okay. <laughs> I want more fire. Yeah. Let's do another one. Okay. Okay, that was awesome, but can we have a bigger explosion? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, but how do you make a bigger explosion? I think the best way to do it is by actually breathing fire. Okay. Yes. As long as it's you and not me, <laughs> right, I'm me. fine with that. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is use cornstarch as my source of fuel. So I'm gonna put it directly in my mouth and then blow it over a propane torch. Okay, why cornstarch? Cornstarch has a lot of carbon, so the more carbon you have, the bigger fire you're going to have, and it has a lot of surface area, so it actually is a uh -huh. great source of fuel. That's gonna be important. You're about to see why. I'm gonna get out of the way again so I don't get caught on fire. All right, goggle up, time for explosions. All right, so goggles on, lab coat on, we're ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a huge mouthful of cornstarch and then I'm gonna blow it directly over the propane torch. Here we go. <laughs> that was so cool, awesomer and bigger. Yes. Okay, I just have one quick question though. Why don't we see cornstarch explosions in like every kitchen and pantry across the world? Great question. So cornstarch actually packs really nicely together so the oxygen cannot sit inside of a pile of it. So when I exhale cornstarch, I'm actually lighting the oxygen from my exhale. That's what's lighting on fire, which lights the cornstarch on fire, which then boom, we have an incredible fire breathing dragon. That's why I said surface area was gonna be important. Right. You're basically like a human jet engine fuel injecting machine. Exactly. That's that's what I call myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to see some more chemistry. That was really cool, but I think we got some more stuff in store, huh? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so what's next? In this reaction, we are going to use potassium iodide as an example of a catalyst. Catalysts, wait, I'm remembering something from school. <laughs> it's just not quite entering my brain. So, a catalyst is something that basically allows for you to go directly from A to B instead of going from A to B to C to D to E. So it provides a new mechanism or a new route. And what that does is it lowers the activation energy barrier, what really means that it speeds up the rate of the reaction. So it makes something go faster. I like fast reactions yeah. because those are usually cool reactions. I know, right? They're my favorite. Okay. Let's get to chemistry -ing. Okay, so I'll what I need to here. do is I'm gonna put my goggles on and I have my gloves on for this one. So I have a four liter Erlenmeyer flask. What I'm gonna do is add 35% hydrogen peroxide. At home, we have anywhere between three to 6% peroxide, but this is Texas, so we wanna be big here. Then I'm gonna add some dish soap. It doesn't matter what kind of dish soap you have, we just need some bubbles here. And then I'm gonna swoosh. Swoosh is a technical term. So we're trying to make a homogenous mixture here, one phase. Now what I need to do is add some food coloring. And because we are on the University of Texas's campus, we're gonna try to go for a burnt orange color. So I have some yellow, I have some red. That's probably good. Now let's swoosh again. Oh, technical that definitely. Term. <laughs> technical term, yeah. So we definitely have a swoosh uh, system here. Now I'm gonna add my catalyst. So our catalyst is potassium iodide. So I'm gonna add it and step back and we're gonna be able to observe our reaction. Here we go. <laughs> that almost hit the ceiling! Oh, that was awesome! That was awesome! 
Okay, <laughs> wait, what are we seeing? Okay. There's like stuff happening. Oh yeah, it's exothermic. And so we're releasing heat. Uh, these are thermal energy. It's the heat waves being released here. Down here, what we did is we released oxygen gas. Now the dish soap trapped the oxygen gas and it's being released here. It's coming out of the top. Isn't oh, this yeah. amazing? It's still coming out it's the top. It's still coming out the top. This, this is, is amazing. so cool. Yeah, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. We release oxygen gas out the top and then liquid water is condensing on the inside, which is kind of hard to see, but you might be able to see it. Oh, this is so awesome. Yes, that was a good one. Man, I'm glad I was over there for I this know, one. Right? Oh, I gotta relax now. Okay, so not every reaction is a chemical change. That's correct. Some of them are actually physical changes or phase changes. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna add hot water to a bucket of liquid nitrogen and we're gonna see oh. the nitrogen molecules move further and further away from each other, which will cause a phase change. Liquid okay, gas. liquid nitrogen is like my favorite kind of nitrogen. Yeah. We're about to see some awesome boiling. Uh, I'll be over here. Goodbye, get out of here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is start with our liquid nitrogen, which is 77 Kelvin or negative 194 Celsius. I'm gonna add about seven or eight liters here because I wanna have a big explosion. Ooh, oh. I feel like we're making a sci-fi movie. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, ah. Oh, that looks awesome. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my cryogenic gloves on because I wanna make sure my hands are nice and protected. Because you want to look cool. Well, yeah, sorry, because I want to look cool and be safe, both things. Okay, my favorite part, I've got hot water here. We're going to add it to the liquid nitrogen. You ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God. Where are you? Where are you? I can't see you. I can't. <laughs> Can you see me? Where are we here? Oh, here we hey. go. Hi, guys. That was awesome. Face changes are the best. It's raining on me. It is raining on me. You made an actual thundercloud. <laughs> an actual 